be seated. Please be seated. I'm going to kick off from what your pastor, you know, what I learned yesterday just watching him. And that is that, and, that, and you know, some of the things he, he I'm, I'm sure that he didn't really think he was teaching anything. He was being himself. And I think those are the strongest kind of messages. The ones where you are a living episode without trying to be. And so yesterday, as he stood in that place, one of the things God said to me is, how you respond to challenges will determine the outcome. When you are faced with challenges, how do you react? As I watched him yesterday, I thought of the Shunammite woman and how her son had died on her lap, right there. The same way you watch that church burn down. Not the church, the building, because the church can never burn. As he, she sat there and saw that baby die, and then she laid the baby on the altar and said, God, you are the one that gave me this baby. I'm putting this baby back on the prophet's bed. Then she rode and went to meet the prophet. And as she was coming, the prophet said, is all well? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? What did she say? She said, it is well. And that's what your pastor stood yesterday. His response to what happened yesterday is a big lesson. That the first few things you do after a prophecy, he could have sat down on the floor. I actually read somebody's tweets that, please, I don't understand. You see, this, this, this speaks of the Christian faith. That there's something that is inside of us that is so resolute. That somebody's church burns down. That's what the person wrote in the tweet. And he did not sit down on the floor and scatter body and start crying. We can't do that. Because we know whom we have believed. All I heard yesterday as, the, as I saw that video was, God is too big for error. He's too big to make mistakes. It was, Satan came for this church. You know that, right? The plan was not the building. The plan was that it would, that fire would start while you are in the conference. That was his plan. But God is too big for error. So when he did it, God said, anyway, I even wanted to change the furnishing of that place. So you just helped my children do the work because normally you have to think of how to get rid of the chairs. You think of how to get rid of it. Uh, so Satan has done it for you. If he had known, he would not have crucified the Prince of Glory. If he had known, he would have let household of David alone. But we all know that he's unfortunate. Know that he said it's not correct. Another thing that he showed yesterday is that faith is really seen in the face of pressure. You can walk about and say you're a faith or you're a man of God. But we really see the God in you when you are faced with challenges. When you are pressured, what comes out? Did you see the peace that came out yesterday? Calm. Didn't shake. He didn't cry. You think he's not paining him? You think he doesn't know how much he went down? As the fire was going, I'm sure maybe somewhere at the back of his mind, maybe not. But I was just thinking, oh, would you know? <laughs> I'm just watching money burn like this. But he didn't shake him. And that's how you have to react to things this year. Because this meeting is to set the tone for the rest of your year and possibly the rest of your life. So don't just see it as a one-off meeting that I just came to shout and enjoy myself and take notes and then leave the notes in my cupboard. You came here to get what will change your life. And the major thing I learned yesterday from him, no distraction. No matter what you are going through, no matter what you are faced with, you must still do what God has called you to do without flinching. And you know, give me 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. So I came here because God also gave me a word for this house. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Everybody that knows me knows one of my favorite scriptures. It says, we all experience times of testing, which is normal for every human being. He says, but God will be faithful to you. Household of David, God will be faithful to you. He said he will screen and filter the severity, the nature, and the timing of every test or trial you face so that you can bear it. How many of you know that if this had happened at some other point, it would have been harder? He says, and each test is an opportunity for you to trust him more. For along with every trial, God has provided for you a way of escape. But this is where I'm going that will bring you out of it victoriously. You are not coming out of this thing that happened as if ah, we just survived. No, you are going to come out victoriously. 
you have come through this fire, I'm telling you, you're not even going to smell of smoke. People will not remember in a few weeks what happened in this church. Because the way God will cause you to recover, and listen, HOD, you will recover all. Let me show you something. Daniel chapter 3. There are two things that you're going to need this year. Those are the two things I want to share with you this morning. HOD, I want to show you something. Daniel chapter 3, give me from verse 8. A couple of years ago, I was having a meeting. Uh, I don't know, maybe three years ago, four years ago. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure now. I can't remember what year. But we're having a meeting, and it was called Shalom, I believe. It was a women's worship meeting, and I usually hold my worship meetings every year. And that year, we're having T.Y. Belum. And so... I got in, so I was about to leave my house, and I was in the bathroom, and that's where God speaks to me. I don't know about the rest of you, but, you know, where you're naked and not ashamed. So God, God was speaking to me there, and, and as I was there, I was praying, and all of a sudden, I saw an open vision, and it seemed the heavens opened, and I saw angels in formation. They were in formation like in a V. There was one angel in front and then the rest were behind and they were flying. And they were flying with swords drawn and flying towards, and I knew they were flying towards our church. But I didn't know what was going on. I was like, ah, what's all this drama? It's where women worship. It's not anything. You know, that's how I felt. I was like, ah, what's all this drama? It's where women worship. What's happening? So I didn't, I didn't think much of it. You know, I just prayed. I kept praying in tongues, kept praying in tongues, prayed till I got to the service. And we have this culture of before our services, maybe we have a major program, we would, all my leaders would go around and lay hands on the seats and they're praying on the chairs. So everyone who comes, as you sit, you have your encounter. So at my meetings, we have a, you know, you and God moment. So we were praying, we finished praying, so we went to pray on the altar. So as we're praying, we're praying, you know, just praying. And then I was telling them that, you know, God said, no matter how hot the fire is, we will not bow. So that was the prayer I led. I said, like, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we will not bow. So my ladies were shouting, we will not bow. We, will not. we were shouting about fire, we will not bow. Nesting. The screen behind us caught fire. <laughs> that was, you know, okay, I, maybe you don't know, but those are called for my conferences. We always have an opener that involves us doing things on screen. And so it's a media kind of, you know, the beginning. Point out of screen. Right where we're standing. So I was like, ah. I said, sit down. But you should have sense by now. But it's as if you're unfortunate. She had just read the scripture that there was fire and they said they will not bow. And we too say we will not bow. You now sent real actual fire. Who is dense like that? So after I saw this Satan, I moved on with my life because he's a fool. So as I moved forward, I was standing beside, just one, like this, these are how the chairs are metal like this. I was just standing beside the chair with my PA at the time, Kemi. She was standing with me. And we're talking about something. I was telling her, make sure this is it. Then police police said, move. I said, police I'm coming. I'm doing something. I said, this, this thing, make sure you move this thing. Move. Police police said, move. So I was like, I'm coming, Lord. I will move. And I, and I was waiting to hear move to do what? You understand? You know, like when God is giving you an instruction. So I thought it was halfway. He was saying move. So I was trying to hear move where or move to what? I just said, move now. So I moved. Immediately I moved. There was this crane, this light. I don't know, they call it goalposts. I don't know how many of you know that light. There's this light that you always have, like a hair exactly. But you know, the ones that stand, like this, this metal bar, but it stands. Immediately I moved. I didn't even know that I was standing in front of it. It fell and scattered the three rows of chair where I was standing. So that thing was supposed to fall on my head. But God. Somebody say, but God. And so, let me tell you one thing about Satan. Is that he will keep trying. And it's always for him to distract you. But God always has a way to turn it around for our good. I was going to read to you Daniel 3. Give me from verse 8. I'm going to jump some things. I want to show you two things. It says, therefore, at the time... A certain Chaldeans came forward and they accused the Jews. They spoke and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image. So basically, they said anybody that does not worship the image will be thrown into the fire. 
Next verse. No, continue. I just wanted to make it faster. Continue. It said, anybody that does not bow will be thrown into the fire. Give me the next verse. There are certain Jews whom you have said. So they told them that there are certain Jews that you have said, and these ones have refused to bow. So the king sent for them. Verse 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in a rage and fury, gave the command to bring them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Next verse. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? And then verse 15, it says, Now if he's giving you, it says, I'm giving you another chance. If you hear this thing and you don't bow, I'm going to throw you into the fire. Next verse. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, I'd like it in King James. King James says, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. In other words, there's no need to respond to this nonsense. If you're going to bring fire, bring fire. But you see this bow, we will not bow. This meeting will go on. Whether you send fire or not, this meeting will go on. And you know what God showed me about these three boys? It wasn't just that they were arrogant. It was the audacity of faith that they had. They understood that, see, king, our God is able to deliver us from your hand. But even if, let's even assume that the building burns down, we will still hold the meeting. And the king was so angry that he told them to increase the fire. And they increased the fire such that even the people that increased the fire, the fire burns them. Is it not at that time that these boys should be negotiating and say, okay, wait, now we'll do only night session. We'll not do morning and night. Let's just have a conversation. No. They said, anything you will do, you see this bow, we will not bow it. Because this meeting must hold. Why? Because lives must be changed. Let me tell you, the fire was not fire. It's you, Satan is after. Satan is determined that you will not attend this conference. Which is why you should get angry and make sure that this evening there's no space, even at the express. You should go and call everybody. You know, this morning when I was praying, and at some point I was doing, um, I have a prayer meeting at five, so I was doing my prayer meeting and I was praying for HOD. And I said to them, you know, because of what happened yesterday, I am so sure, I know like I know my name, that there are some people that God wants to set free at this meeting. And that's why Satan did everything. To make sure, while I was speaking, a couple of people now started writing in the comment section, please, where's the venue? It's as if I will come for this meeting. Please, where's the venue? It's as if I will come for this meeting. So let me tell you, Satan may try. He will send whatever he will send, but we know that all things work together for our good. So what he meant for evil, God will still find a way to turn it around for good. So how do you get back at Satan? This hall must be filled this night. Go out and call your friends. Call your neighbors. People are saying, so far, pay transport. Tell them to come. Somebody's life. Somebody's life is going to be changed at this meeting. And that's why Satan is doing everything he's doing. They shouldn't have audacious faith. It's anything you like do. I see that's how you must approach 2024. This year is not that kind of year. 2024 is not the kind of year that is taking pity on people. No, 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 no. Let me explain to you. God said to me at the beginning, no, at the end of last year, he said to me, this year is like a Goliath year. This year will seem too tough for many people to handle, but they that know their God shall be strong and they shall be do exploits. And I know that they are in HOD, am I right? And so he said, it is also not just a year that when I say it's like Goliath, it's too big, no. He said, this year will challenge you. Every morning Goliath came out. And he would challenge the children of God. And he said, in fact, you know what? Just bring one person. I'm the champion on this side. Bring somebody. If they win me, I'll allow you. And then finally, David steps up with audacious faith. Small boy. Small boy. And you know you have that covenant of David in this house. It is the sure message of David. If you go against anything, it will go down for you. If anything comes against you, it's crushed. Nothing can survive you. And so David had that, con- that consciousness, that audacious faith, that boldness. He stepped up. You see, that's the kind of faith that Jesus had. When he entered the temple, he said, you know what, bring this temple down, I'll build it, I will rise it up in three days. They said, this temple that took our fathers 46 years to build, Jesus said three days. And that's why I know, Pastor Shola, that you see this building. 
when you are going to rebuild it, it's going to take you half the time you did the first time to set it up. Mark my words. You will see that God will move in ways that you will not even understand. And God said to tell you that you will rebuild it with your words. You will not need to fight in this battle. You will not even need to beg. God will give it to you and he will give it to you freely. I stand here today as a prophet of God and I'm telling you, Master Shola, when God moves on this thing, you yourself, your ears will begin to tingle because people will testify on your behalf. You will not be able to talk because you will not be able to understand. You will stand on that altar the day you are dedicating it and you say, who am I? What is my house that you will love me this much? That this thing will be done so quickly. And David went there and he said, I can go. This year it will take audacious faith. It may not look like it. You may not even look like it. But if you are bold enough to say, I will partner with God this year and step out in faith, God is going to back you up fully. And David got there and he saw Goliath. And as he came, they told him, carry the kings. He said, no, I've not tried this thing. I'm not used to it. Let me take the catapults that I'm used to. And he took his catapult and his five stones. And he got there, and he was just doing catapult like this. Goliath said, uh-uh, am I a dog? That this small thing, listen, they've underrated you. But this year, <laughs> I said in, they may have underestimated you, but this year. <laughs> and as David got there, Goliath said to him, am I a dog that you will come to me with sticks and stones? She is a small boy, I be Goliath. She, he came with sticks and stones. Why then, Goliath, did your next utterance become that you cursed him by your gods? Listen, guys, it's a God-to-God battle in 2024. Everybody has altars. I say this all the time. We may look like we don't know what we're saying, but listen to me. Everybody has altars. There had better be something on your altar. There had better be fire burning on your altar. And nobody's going to do it for you. When they told David that they cursed him by his God, David did not say, excuse me, let me go and call my daddy. My daddy knows, my daddy has a God, I'm coming. Sir, he stood there. And he said, eh, may I carry catapult because I thought you are holding sword, I'm holding catapult. But now you say you cursed me by your gods. He said, you come to me with sword and spear, but me, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord, the God, the God of the angel Hermes. And that's how God backed him up. Listen, this year, don't go alone. Wherever the challenge is, don't go alone. Whether it is in church, whether it is in the office, whether it is in your family, don't go alone. David stood and said, I'm coming to you. Since we're using God to God, that's what I even like. I like God to God battle. Because I didn't even really have power before. I'm a small boy. I'm a youth. You, you are a champion from your youth. So let's do God to God. And then he did like this. Carried his catapult. Drew the team back. Released it. First of all, ah, I love Jesus. You see this God there? He will first do as if this is where he's going. You know when they want to play penalty? You don't do as if you want to kick this side and kick it this way. That's what God did to Goliath. As the, as the, the stone released like this, he landed on the forehead. Everybody said, hey, he has killed him. God said, what? Did like this from the back, Goliath landed like this. How do you shoot somebody here? And the person falls forward. The only way it happened is because David hit it from the front. God pushed it from the back. You see, you have started this year. By pushing it from the front, by attending this conference, the rest of the year will fall for you. I thought I would hear a louder amen than that. I need you to understand the God you are dealing with. Because a lot of us Christians, we don't even understand the God we're dealing with. If you know who you have, I, if you understand, you, you, you will now be, you know, when the Bible says you humble yourself, that will be the only work you are doing for the rest of your life. Because there's almost an arrogance that comes from knowing that, ah, this God is my father, Shah. Nobody can touch me, Shah. You come against me, you are finished. See, David never lost a battle. Whether it was against human beings, whether it was against Goliath, whether it was against an army, God gave David victory everywhere he went. Household of David, do you understand what you carry? Then you now go to your office and you say, I don't understand what they are saying. They are saying, they can't. 
See, they can't even understand. It's you they don't understand. Jesus said, if you are born of flesh, you are flesh. If you are born of spirit, you are spirit. And like the spirit, you are like the wind. They don't know whether you are coming or you are going. So they can't understand you. So this year, when you are doing the things you are doing, don't expect people to understand you. Just be moving with audacious faith. Somebody shout audacious faith. That's the first thing, audacious faith. Listen, it's okay to boast as far as you are boasting in the Lord. So you say, when you, so, so when they say, ah, I heard your church burn. Say, oh no. No, it didn't burn. We're actually refurnishing. <laughs> and in the next six months, you're going to see what God is going to do. Don't allow anybody to intimidate you. If God is really there, why did he burn down? What? What? Are you telling me that my God makes mistakes? I just told you that we're refurnishing. And so God needed to clean out so that it would be easy for us to refurnish. Your mind, and see, when people tell you those things, just tell them that your mind, is, you can't conceive of my God. His thoughts are too high. So I'm not saying you're unintelligent. I'm just saying that you may need to do a bit better to compare yourself with my God. So this year, don't allow anybody to intimidate you. When David came out, they said, you, you are too forward. He said, that's exactly why I will be your king in the next few years, Eliab. I'm too forward. And this year is not just about audacious faith. It's about speaking faith. This year, don't close your mouth. You see all this, I'm too cute. I don't, all those things, forget it this year. Do you understand? Forget it this year. Anything that will keep your mouth shut this year is going to destroy your destiny. You need to speak. When David got there, David said, I will cut your head. I will feed... The boy had not done anything when he described what was going to happen. Even me, I was afraid for Goliath. Because you understood that it's a battle of words. This year, you've got to open your mouth, though. Ah, you have to open your mouth. Take them, give me Ezekiel 38. Yes, Ezekiel 38. I want to show you something. And we're going to speak this morning. Oh. Remember, I said we're going to build that church. We're going to rebuild that church with our words. Because the money that you need to rebuild it, it's just one word away from you. The Bible says that you will have what you say. Not what you think, oh. What you say. At the beginning of this year, Pastor Andy Osakwe came to our church. And God had been telling me things about what he wanted to do this year. And I, when he was telling me the things, Pastor Shola, I was calculating the money. I'm an You can't send me a message without me thinking about the money. So as he was telling me, I said, ah. You say I should shoot season five, three to five. <laughs> I know how I shot just us get season one to two. I know the thing I went through. Three to five. And now dollar is this rate. I was calculating everything. And God said to me, I didn't ask you to do that. I'm sending the money. Huh. I've seen God move. And I've seen, I, honestly, I've seen God move in ways my mind cannot even explain it. That sometimes when you look at it, you'll be like, ah, we're like them that dreamed. God, there's some testimony I can't share now. So that people not kidnap me. But let's just say God has been good. So when God told me that, you know, I just, I said, okay, gain momentum. We don't do anything until we've gained momentum. So I came for the service, introduced Pastor Andy. I said, and as I was introducing him, I said something. I said, my word for this year is in Dr. Andy's mouth. So when he came up, you know, he now laughed. He chat, just started preaching and then, and all that. And when he's, at some point, when he's, he, just, he now came down. He left the puppy. He said, is it okay to come down? I said, yes, sir. Move around. with your church. If you like, self, climb my head. Just, I know that my word is in your mouth, sir. Anything. So he came down. And as I was preaching, he now said, money, come to me now. Money, come to me now. He now said, you're going to speak it. So all of us were shouting in church. So when he said, we said, no, you're not saying it the right way. You have more understanding than your teachers. Let me correct you. Money in every currency Come to me now. So when he finished preaching, I came back up. I wanted to be cute and say, were you blessed? Were you really blessed? They used to say, it's not that type. See, leave that, that your shakara, all those things I used to do gentle, leave it in 2023. 2024, you shout at Goliath. Because Goliath said, say, you are not going to move. And you have to get him down so you can move. So I came up, I said, we're going to speak again. And we're going to speak it another way. Dr. Andy was there. I said, money 
in every currency. Come to me now. Money, we said like three times. So I traveled to Ghana. I traveled to Ghana a couple of days ago. I just got back. So, see me, I just got back. Like, I just got back from America. I just got back. So anyhow, I just returned. Okay, so when you go to Ghana, you return. When you go to America, you just go back. So I returned. And while I was there, we had a meeting. You know, I just, I usually, anywhere I travel to, I have a meet and greet with my tribe members. So as I was there, not tribe members, as my tribe, three people, just us guest tribe, my ministry tribe. So as I was there, one lady, so I, I was taking pictures with people. So one lady comes up to me. I says, oh, I'm Hannah's heart. So I'm finally going to get my baby hug. So I say, ah, you are trusting God for baby. The Satan is finished. Hug, 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 twins, triplet, what do you want? So we hugged. And then as she was leaving, she now said, I've been wanting to say, if you see this, this man, eh? be like, be like small picking. If I say it in English, it's not really, do you understand? It'd be like small picking. You cannot rate her by your natural flesh. So she said, oh, that she wanted to, you know, sow a seed. So I said, okay, my PA is standing there, you know, just attend to her. So I was just, so I just pointed at my PA. I said, she, somebody's coming to me. So I just continued. I wasn't really thinking about it. So I finished that one. Somebody has now came to hug me. So she hugged me and put an envelope in my hand. She now said, hold it well. So I was laughing. It, was a card. it looked like a card. So I was laughing and I said, ah, this one inside, I should hold this card well. The love notes inside must be deep. So I said, no problem. I will hold on to it, you know. So I held on to it. Then... And nothing, somebody has now came and said, oh, God said she should come and see me. She needs to sow a seed. I said, this, yes, yeah, looking good, though. <laughs> so I was even calculating in my head that, ah, you know, how will I change CDs and all that? But I need to change it to dollars because I was going from there to the airport. So I was just calculating in my head. How will I do all these things? Listen. See, God will never inconvenience you. No, let me rephrase that. Not that he will not inconvenience you, but God will not, God will not stress you. His burden is light. And his yoke is easy. That thing you are worrying about, he's already sorted it out. The challenge is you want to do it yourself. Do you understand? And you know, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. You are Nigerians. And Nigerians, we have not used our hand to do something. That's why when we even pray, we pray as if we are the one that is going to answer the prayer. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. We have to. I understand the effect of heaven prayer of the righteous. I let I understand that. But there's a way we, we even draw machine gun. Kiss it and do yeah, all those things. That's why I came today. Let me face my front. So as I got to the room, I just opened my bag. And now my peer. I said, ah, you put, what did you put here? She now said, oh, that, that lady you said she come and meet me. So I thought the thing. I said, ah, do you see this? It's plenty. Lo and behold, I was talking to Pasuke. Pasuke. I said, Pasuke, ah, this way low. This meeting, God really blessed me. And I said, ah, did you check the man? I said, no, I didn't even check it, but I need to find a way to change it. And I said, check it now. I just opened it. That's how dollars was pouring on my body. I don't want to call the money. <laughs> this is how I opened my mouth. I said, and I told them to go and give my PA like that. I would have collected my team by myself. Because human beings, <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Baby, I'm joking. But my point is this. That, that money that I call for that gaining momentum, God showed me that this is your first trip. I'm already showing you what I want to do. And that's why today we will not be quiet though. Because we must move back into our property quickly. We don't have time. Maybe God brought you here so that you can spy the land. Pastor Shola. <laughs> to show you, you know, honestly, when you climb this now, just say, ah, this kind of building fit Pastor Shola shall. <laughs> hey, Jody, don't you want this kind of <laughs> workers? Don't you want to be in the building? Do you want to stand up for guests? <laughs> so, this kind of place, like four services, you are good. <laughs> good. You take Monday off and you know you have served the Lord. So we're going to speak. <laughs> we're going to speak oh, because this year there's power in speaking. Ezekiel 38, verse 1 to 11. I want the message translation. God has been talking to some of us and we've been very lethargic this year. God is not even going to allow you. He will grab you this year. <laughs> I was reading that scripture that said that we were seated together in Christ in heavenly places. Do you know it's this year I realized that the Bible said we have been made to sit. Do you know what that means? That means that they press you. You have been made to see whether you want to be in Christ Jesus in heavenly places or not. They force you. This is that year. This year. Whether you want to be blessed or not, you will be blessed this year. This year. Pastor Shola will not shout anyhow. Shout, 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 shout. We are not seeing the blessing. This year is not that year. As he whispers, we'll be seeing evidence. 
I'm telling you, God is birthing a new thing. Ah, this scripture, I know I want to read this scripture. Because yesterday when I saw that video, I saw this scripture. I saw you smack in the center of this scripture. It was standing there. The scripture I'm about to read is the valley of dry bones. But as I sat there and as I was watching, I, I'm telling you, I watched that video many times yesterday. Because I was trying to imagine how does one, how do, do you understand? How does one survive this if you don't have God? That's all I was thinking yesterday. I was saying, it's, only, it's the God in him that is responding. The flesh is not, the flesh cannot respond. The flesh wants to cry. But the God in him is responding. And that's because he has, he has buffeted his body. He has put it under. So the only thing you are seeing is Jesus. Jesus is saying, what is this now? I brought down temple and built it up in three days. This is nothing. Give me that scripture. You are enjoying the message. You don't want to give me scripture. <laughs> give me the scripture, please. Let me read it. It says, God's message came to me. Son of man. No, 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 no. It's not from, it's from 30, 37, sorry. Sorry, I wrote 38, sorry. Uh-huh. This is it. He says, no, go back to verse 1. He says, God grabbed me. Whether he wanted to or not. <laughs> he said, God grabbed me and God's spirit took me up and sat me down in the middle of an open plain, strewn with bones. Those chairs yesterday were looking like bones to me. Yeah. Verse 3. And then he led me around among a lot of bones. And then he said to me, go to verse 3, don't worry. Oh, no, 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 go back to 2, sorry. Go back to 2. There's something I saw there. He led me around and among them, a lot of bones. There were bones all over the place, dry bones, bleached by the sun, by fire. I said yesterday, I was seeing this scripture in reality. Then he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? I say, master God, only you know that. That's how, as I'm saying to you, that you will move into that place speedily. Some of you are saying, ha, who first raised money? Do you know dollar rates? Do you know? Keep quiet. Your job is to speak. God's job is to bring it to pass. And he said, what did he say? Prophesy. So in other words, speak. You're going to go back. You're going to speak. Today as we're standing here, we're going to speak over those chairs. Say, speak over the dry bones. Listen to the message of God. Move fast, move fast. God the master told the dry bones, watch this. I'm bringing the breath of life to you and you will come back to life. Verse 6. I will attach sinews to you. And meet on your bones. I will cover you with skin and breathe life into you. And you will come alive and you will realize that I am God. I'm telling you, when God furnishes that place, covers the seats with chairs, covers the place, drapes everywhere, you will know that he is God. He says, I prophesied just as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound. Yesterday, there was a sound in the body of Christ. Yes, today when Pastor Shola was saying he has never seen this kind of love, I was just saying to myself, when something touches the body, it touches all of us. If he hits the head, the entire body will lie down. If he pains the finger, the brain will feel it. If he pains the leg, we can't move as fast. When he hits one, he hits all. And so he prophesied, and there was a sound and a rustling, and the bones moved and came together bone to bone. And I kept watching and sinews formed. I kept watching and I, and, I, and I saw the place redraped. And I saw the seats covered again. And I saw rugs all over the place. He said, but there was no life in them. That's just a building. Look at verse 9. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, tell the breath. God the master says, come from the four winds. Come breath, breathe on these slain bodies and breathe life. Give me 10. So I prophesied just as he commanded me. The breath entered them and they came alive. And they stood up on their feet as a, a huge army. Listen, what is going to come out of that thing that happened yesterday is a huge army. People will join your church because they will say, how can these people go through this thing and survive? And when they come, the anointing will hit them and they will be on fire for God. So out of this is going to come a mighty army. But the only way we can make it happen is that we will prophesy. We will speak. When we are done speaking today, Satan will wish that he did not come near us. I waited to have my babies for eight years. 
And every day, Satan would attack my mind. You can't have children. The spiritual children you are called to have. You cannot have children. And I would keep confessing the word. I would keep confessing the word. He will come again. He will say, I will say, I'm pregnant this month. I will confess. I will see my period. I will say, God, again. One day, God now said, this thing you are doing back and forth, it cannot really work for you. If you are going to confess something, you have to stand on that thing and believe it. And so at those times, I would be bleeding. And I would say to my body, blood or no blood, period or no period, I am pregnant. I know I am pregnant because I am not carrying blood, I am carrying a child. And until a child comes out of me, I insist that I am pregnant. Listen, because I said you should speak, does not mean it will happen immediately. You will speak and keep speaking. You will be like the woman with the issue of blood. She said to, and kept on saying to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I will be made whole. There are some things that you will speak with consistency this year. But you have to do it boldly and with audacity. Because Satan is a coconut head. He does not hear. And so some things you must insist because he will still come back and ask you, did God really say that you're going to get a promotion this year? Did God really say you're going to get married this year? Did God really say you're going to have a baby this year? You must maintain your stand. Did God really say you're going to rebuild this thing in half the time it took you the first time? You have to insist. And you're building in Nigeria. Masons will come with their wala. You will insist. Okay, as I go for road, police, you will insist. Okay, the glass people, they're not sure, of, you will insist. Okay, when we're shipping this, you will insist. And how do you insist? By speaking. You will keep speaking. You can't keep your mouth closed this year. You will keep speaking. You will keep speaking. You will keep speaking. And listen, your head may doubt. Because logic, well, most of us are educated. And that's part of our problem in Christianity. We think we are too educated for God. So when God says something is going to happen, we don't believe it. When the prophet prophesied that a, a loaf of bread will be sold for, the guy said, even if the heavens were to be open, it cannot happen. He said it will happen, but you will not see. You will see it, but you won't eat it. So when it comes to things like this, and then you come for meetings like this, and then God is declaring a word, you must be willing and obedient to what God is saying. You must agree. This year, one of the things you must be conscious of is to align with whatever the father or the prophet over this house is saying. Align. If he says this year, you will make it. What happens now? So then they shout every year. This year is your year. Meanwhile, year, not the year. Don't remove your body from them. Oh, God. See, this year is not that year. I'm telling you guys. This year is not that year. There are certain things that God has spoken concerning this house. You need to make sure that you align yourself. And you see, we can see examples of Jesus. Jesus did this thing, I'm telling you. These two things, being audacious and speaking up in faith. Jesus did it consistently. Okay, let's look at um, Lazarus. Lazarus died. They told Jesus that, first of all, they told Jesus he was sick. Jesus now relaxed more where he was. Then they say he's dead. Jesus said, yeah, let's go and go and resurrect him. As they got there, Martha came out and said, oh, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection. She said, she said, I know he will raise up on the last day. Shut up and listen to what they are saying. This year, remove anything that you think you already know in your mind. Jesus said, I am here. She said, I know you'll be resurrecting me on the last day. Jesus said, I am here. You are still talking about what? Be quiet and listen to what I'm saying now. Listen to the current word. I know you've heard your pastor preach for years. I know the example Pastor Shola will give when he's preaching this sermon. I know how Pastor Abby does. I know I... You, shut up. You don't know. Because this year, God is about to move in them in a new dimension. So you are going to see them in ways you've never seen them before. You are going to hear them in ways you've never heard them before. But you must make up your mind that you will listen and align with what they are saying. And so when Jesus got there, Mary now came again and said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, where have you laid him? And that's what I've come to ask you this morning. Those dreams that God gave you, where have you laid them? Where is the point where you have stopped believing? That's where you laid him. Because if they still believed, they would have kept him in the room and be rubbing things on his body. But you have buried them 
Where have you laid them? Let's go there. And Jesus got there. And he prayed a simple prayer. He said, Lord, I know you hear me always, but for the benefit of these people. But you see what he did again. Let me read the exact verse to you. I read it this morning. I said, this thing, listen, guys, you must be audacious, but you must speak in faith. But you see, there was, a, there was an understanding. He said, I'm saying this, but I know you hear me always. There was already a relationship. He did not come outside and start shouting empty words. Because now I say you must be audacious in faith. You will not carry yourself. And he say, I declare. De declare what? The only reason why you can declare is because somebody gave you authority to declare. You don't know the person. You can't declare anything. Keep quiet. It's not by saying I declare. That's not, that's not, it's not by saying I declare. Jesus said, I know you hear me always. So we already have communion. But then he opened his mouth. <laughs> I think it is a, let me see. I want the version. I want to be sure of the version. I think it's TPT. He said that Jesus shouted with authority. Lazarus, come forth. That thing you have been looking for. You need to open your mouth this year and shout with authority. You need to open your mouth and do what? Shout with authority. You're going to declare. Money in every currency, come to me now. You're going to declare healing. Because you see, a lot of us as Christians, we're wasting what Jesus has done. That it makes, sometimes it makes me really sad. Christians, if we know what we have, we're too focused on doing, living for social media. So you pray on social media, but in your bedroom, you can't pray two minutes. And we're doing ourselves an injustice because we're going about looking for who to pray for us, but you are not, that, that, see when everybody goes away, that corporate anointing. What about the me and my daddy? Me and God. I can tell him things. He can tell me deep secrets. See, they don't tell people secrets in public. Eh. Says, call on to me and I'll answer you. And I'll tell you great and mighty things you will never be able to figure out on your own. It's not in public. It's inside your room. In your prayer closet. And listen, it's not about prayer. It's not about Father, Lord God, Father, Lord God. Jesus said, you think you'll be heard by your much speaking. No. It's your much listening that brings results. Much listening. So you enter your quiet place. It is the power you bring from there. It's not, David did not come out and start killing Goliath. He didn't just carry that in and say, oh, God, I'm going. No, 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 no. There are some things him and God have done in the quiet place. He killed lion and bear. If God was able to bring down lion and bear, he could bring down Goliath. But were we there when he killed lion and bear? It was only him and God. So obviously he had an, a secret place relationship before he came out. This generation, please, don't do your Christianity on social media. I want to beg you. I, I, I know someone will say, Shabby, you dare social media? I dare. But I'm telling you that's not where the power is. It's in the secret place. It's in you and your daddy locked up. Those days when I enter my bathroom like, and close the door, my husband knows that it's me and Satan. I, Satan is in trouble. Because he used to come to me and say, you will never have a child. And I had words for God promised me that we'll have children. I will go to a doctor. The doctor says, it's not possible, ma. Let's do IVF. Let's do this one. Let's do that one. And that time, who dashed me money for IVF? When I married my husband, I didn't have money. He didn't have. And there was no way I was going to disgrace my husband and go back to my dad and say, daddy, um... Write me a check now to go and do IVF. It was not happening. So I could only stay in the word. I remember one morning I was bleeding so badly. No, it was in the evening. The next, the next Saturday night. The next day was Sunday morning. I was bleeding so badly. <laughs> you see that woman with the issue of blood? I was her. Uh, when I say, you can't convince me that God is not real. You know, there are some encounters you have with God. You cannot convince me that God is not real. Can you convince Mary and Martha that God does not resurrect people? Why do you think they believe that he was going to rise up from the dead? Because he had resurrected their brother. There are some things you can't convince. That's why all those times they will come, they'll say, don't pay don't pay tithes. All of you that are going to church, you, are, you, die in church. you can't convince me. You didn't die for me. You didn't save me. You didn't give me children. I know the journey. And you see, a journey of faith, the Holy Spirit must be involved. Because there are things the Holy Spirit will just begin to tell you. It's not claim it, confess it, name it. That's not it. The Holy Spirit, you see that relationship, you can't miss it. You can't miss it. That's why I say it's not public. It's not, I just get one small revelation, I run to social media. You first eat it, digest it, use it for your life, let it produce results. Before you come outside 
and start social media church. <laughs> so, <laughs> trouble. Who is that person? So I, I, I remember I would stay there and I would stay in the world and I would be confessing the world. I did, see, at some point, eh, let me tell you, this thing, there's an encounter, you, there's always a defining moment for every Christian. And I'm praying that you will contact that confi- defining moment at this conference. Amen. There's always a point where you know, you see, I'm tired of playing church. First three years of our marriage, I was running from doctor to doctor. Funny enough, this was not my message. I don't know why I've deviated. From, from doctor to doctor, because from the time I was 16, they told me you may never be able to have a child. When I met my husband and told him, my husband said, who is doctors? The word of God says, I say, hmm. Oh, say this, you are the word of God. You go still continue when we did inside marriage. Because when you want to marry, the amount they used to borrow money is not what they used to pay. Mm-hmm. So when you are telling me that you love me, this one, I've told you now, well, they say I will not have children, no. He said, none shall be barren in this land. In short, let's name them. David, David, Ahadassah, I say, here. Yeah? I've seen you one, no. Okay. We entered the marriage, first year, second year. By the second year, my mother started calling me. Is something wrong with your brain? Is something wrong with you? You that they say you know after that you are doing honeymoon. Have you started going to a doctor? I started going from doctor to doctor. And you see the problem with those doctors is that they were confirming what they had told me before. And before I got married, they had put that fear. And the thing I feared the most now happened to me in marriage, that I will not have children. By the third year, I went to one doctor. My friend called me and said, ah, you see this doctor, that he's even a Christian. And that he will even give me scriptures. We'll confess, we'll stand in faith together. I say, okay, let's go. We got there. Doctor said, go and bring your husband, let's do test. I said, sir, I will not come. He said, why? I said, he said, let me call him. I said, see, I know my husband. If anybody can get him to do anything, it's me and God. And it's not even me that I'll go to him direct to. I will go and pray. Then God will turn his heart because my husband is not externally motivated. You know those things that say, just cook for your husband. It's not my husband. Just as says, it's not my husband. The only thing that moves him is that you pray to the father. Then the father will turn his heart. And say, you self behave yourself. This is my daughter. Don't frustrate her. That's the only way. So my husband, I went to him and told him. I said, doctor said you should come. My husband said, come for what? I said, they said test. He said, eh, I've already been tested. I said, hey, you've done your test. He said, yes, and I've been tested by the word purified seven times. (laughs) He now looked me in the eye. He said, Abraham's body now dead, brought forth Isaac. He says, my body dead. I said, no. He said, go, you have your children. I went back to the doctor. I said, doctor, help me. <laughs> you know my own problem. Help me. Leave this man first. As I got there, the doctor said, okay, come on the 12th. So they were trying to find a cycle. From, I didn't have a cycle. We were trying to see if I was ovulating and all of that because I was bleeding and it's only drugs that make me not bleed. So I'll be bleeding throughout the year if I don't take drugs. So... I, I, and I went, so the, on the, it was the day before the day I was supposed to go for that test. So I went to my friend who took me there and said, come and escort me, let's go. When I got there, I met a woman. And I think, I, I don't know why God is making me share these things. Because like I said, it's not my notes. As I met that woman, the woman, we finished greeting, then I was leaving. She now said, she gave me a card and said, the name of her business was Davida. I know Davida Enterprise or something. And I said, ah, that's, I'm believing God for David and Davida. That's my children's name. She now said, ah, that, that's her children's name too. I said, are you serious? I'm going to sow a seed into your life. Eh? I cannot see opportunity like this. When God has done it for you, that means it's in neighborhood. I must sow a seed. So my friend walked me to my car. I said, after, I'll give you money for that woman. She said, you don't know that woman. I said, I don't know. Him. Please forgive me, all those of you that don't like pigeon. The, this is how it happened. <laughs> so I said, I don't know. Him. She said, you don't know that woman. I said, no. She said, no, your doctor's wife be that. I said, you are joking. My doctor's wife? He said, ah. Their children's name is David and Davida. She's a wee children. Now faith, she they talk, they're never born. <laughs> and it's the way you put it, oh, that's how me too I did it that day. <laughs> I say, you say, waiting. This doctor, where you say, go give me scripture, never born, and still leave me. <laughs> so as I was going home, the Holy Spirit said to me, why won't you let me help you? Why won't you let me help you? Say, the person you are running to is asking me for the same thing. Not Daniel and Daniela. Not Samuel and Samuela. Not Jacob and Jacoba. <laughs> David and Davida. Why? Why won't you let me help you? And then he gave me a scripture. I don't have time now to read it. And the scripture says that your salvation will come from total dependence on me. The very thing you're willing to do. So I got home that day. told my husband. 
I say, you won't believe what happened to me. I was crying. My husband said, what happened? I said, see, my doctor, he said, his wife has not, my husband fell from the chair laughing. He said, when you no go hear word, stay in the word. He said, it's in the word. I said, man, don't use me and preach. I'm telling you it's in the word. <laughs> so that was the day I made up my mind. I said, this thing I'm even telling people that God can do anything. What's wrong with me? So that time, no Google now. I opened, I went, got my husband's study, I went, brought out his concordance, brought out his Dick's Bible, brought out his Thomas Nelson Bible, everything I could find. I started open page by page. If I see barrenness, I will write the scripture. If I see fertility, I write the scripture. If I see miscarriage, that's when I knew that there's scripture for twins and triplets in the Bible. I didn't know this thing, so I was writing it down. Then I now saw the scripture that says that this word is held to all your flesh. I, I say Satan is finished. I sat on the word. I said eating it. I will wake up in the morning. One tablet three times daily. <laughs> Mess into all my flesh. I will sit on the word. I will confess. There are two nations in my womb. Two people shall be separated from my body. One shall be physically stronger than the other. That's how I know I'm having a boy and a girl. I cannot be barren. I know that my children surround my table. One child does not surround the table, so I will not have one child. I know like I know my name. It is a reward for my husband because he fears the Lord. And if my husband will have his arrows in his youth, he will not be an old man chasing children with white hair. I was confessing like a man. Ah, talk. I was confessing like a man. See, until you have read that place. Do you understand? You, you won't understand what I'm saying. When you are looking for something and God says this is how to go about it, you will sit down. That time you will not think of social media. You will not think of wig. All this, forget all this thing. We do it where we want to come out so that because they put this video. Those kind of things. I sit on the floor. I will remove everything. Kata is coming. Yes, I don't care. It's me and my Jesus. Who cares? She needs to collect what I want to collect. So I stood on the word. I did this thing. First year. Second year. Third year. Fourth year. Was the fifth year. Then my husband woke up one day and said that the word for this year, 2013, is 2013 is my year of I will testify. I said, the English no sound well. <laughs> my year of I will testify. Don't we say shut up and align. That's what I'm telling you this morning. Shut up and align. Anything your pastor has declared over this house, shut up and align. Don't be like Martha. I know that on the last day, you shut, shut up. Jesus say, I am. You're still talking about the future. He said, I am the resurrection. You will see that your brother will come up to come alive now. You are telling me you know I'm I'm telling you me I'm the one. You are giving me a revelation of myself. That's <laughs> why so I aligned. I now told her, I now told myself, let's remove my year off. So in 2013, I will testify. January 5th, I woke up in the morning feeling bloated. I went to do a test. That's how I knew that when, you know that scripture that says that when the Lord turns around your captivity, we're like them that dream. I couldn't count again. I didn't know. How to count one, two. So I did test. I saw two lines. I didn't, I say, is this one or two? One or two. I went to wake my husband. I say, is this one or two lines? He said, it's two lines. I say, two lines. He said, yes, what does he mean? I say, it means I'm pregnant. He said, eh, how do you know you're pregnant? I say, when you see two lines on this stick, you need you're pregnant. He said, no, but I knew from the word of God. I said, oh, God, no spoil testimony for me. <laughs> I knew from the word. I said, thank you. We knew from the word and I do the word. So, but I'm pregnant. I went to the hospital for the first time in my life, in eight years of marriage, I saw baby in my womb. <laughs> but Satan being a fool, and that's why I told you he never gets tired, he's a fool. And you must treat him as such. I went to the hospital for antenatal. As I got there, one of her zealous nurse gave me drugs, and I told her that, I've never, they've never given me these drugs here. She said, please, madam, don't teach me my work. Take your medicine and go. And me, I didn't want to teach her work because I've not been pregnant before and I'm not a nurse. So I took the medicine and I went home. I drank it and started bleeding. Eight years work. <laughs> they now told me that it's threatened abortion. So I said to the doctor, I said, threatened, what does that mean? He said, eh, that you might, it means that you may lose the baby. I said, oh, threat now. I said, Satan does not, he cannot take it out. Because I've confessed and I know God's word concerning me is true. That I cannot have a miscarriage. So if I carry, I cannot miscarry because the, the, my, my, my womb is fortified and the children within me are blessed. So they are empowered to come out. And, I say, I can't lose this baby. I say, not threat now. I go, I go, I go, I go, not mean anything. If you can take it, I'll take it, but you cannot. So I went home. My husband said, you're going to have a baby in America. He came to look for me there again. I was going out one day, the hospital started calling me, where are you, where are you, where are you? You have preeclampsia. This one, you could have a seizure. You could have a I say, you, you are the one that, I cannot have a seizure in Jesus' name. You know, I was answering them. You know, I say, I say, it cannot happen to me in Jesus' name. 
They were asking my friend, does she speak English? The doctor said, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I said, do you too understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I cannot have seizure in Jesus' name. You cannot, I, I refuse to take what you are giving me, is it by force? And that's how I had my daughter, August 22nd, 2013. <laughs> Two years later, I woke up, January 5th, 2015, feeling bloated. My husband said, What's today's date? I said, January 5th. He said, Go check now. Why don't every January 5th you get better? <laughs> I say, It cannot be. I say, It cannot be. I enter, lo and behold, it's B. And that's how August 22nd, 2015, I had my son. You know, I've been confessing there are two nations in my womb. I was confessing for twins. I had twins, but they're two years apart. See, the God we serve, they flex. Just to prove to me that the first time was not a mistake. That the word works, the principles work. If you use it 100% of the time, I guarantee you the word of God does not fail you. If you can stand on it, if you can remain insistent, then you can keep speaking it. And so Jesus got to that grave. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. He shouted with a loud voice. We're going to shout with a loud voice too. I don't know what you want to come for to. I don't know what it is. And listen, before I say, let me tell you something. This year, there are some people you will block. Oh. Ah. You see, there's some resurrection exercise that does not need plenty crowd. Jesus did this one in public. Oh, but when he wanted to raise Lazarus' daughter, he got there. They started mocking him. He said, she's not there, she's sleeping. They said, hey, that's what we're not going to have for this Israel. No. Wait till Musa don't go see for gates. He said, eh? You say what? That she's what? Jesus said, oh yeah, I don't even have time for this nonsense. All of you, go out. Block them, they will not view your status. Block them from social media. Block. Because this year, we're going to do dangerous things for God. And listen, the things you are calling for is not for yourself. So I'm not here to, to teach you materialism. I'm not here to teach you comfort money so that you can eat. See, money is the least resource God has. The least. You need to enter the realm of buying without money. That's where he's calling you to, to a higher place. That's why I told you, Pastor Shola, you will build this building to not be with sweat. Because God needs it. So we're going to call for to this year. Ah, you will block them. Don't be angry. Don't see what happened. The only person, one with God, is majority. I live for an audience of one. If God sent me here, and he sent me to tell you something, and I say it and you're angry, it's okay. You know why? Because the person that sent me is happy. And I'm okay with it. I don't go with crowd though. You like, you don't know me. You like, you know me. No consign me. You see me like this. Never. Jesus is satisfied. Jesus is glorified. I'm good. So this year, some people will be quiet though. There's nothing they didn't tell me when I was trusting God for children. Why are you doing like this? Your husband has used your womb to see. When, since he married you, his church has blown. But the Bible says that he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. So favor is exploding his church. Which one will be saying they don't collect my womb? People will say all kinds of things. If you tell me nonsense, I block you. Nobody above blocking. Nobody. You tell me rubbish. How can you people say you are going to rebuild that church? You block them. She people will say God is faithful. Why did you not keep your church from burning? You block them. Because we are building. And we cannot answer every Tobias and Sambalat that comes to us. We can't come down. We're too high. So I want you to jump up because my time is done. I didn't even share half of what I wanted to share. Because time will not allow me to tell you so many things about Jesus' resurrection. But we're going to shout. Ah, I want you to call that thing for to start thinking about it now. Start thinking about it. Start thinking about it. Makalabo shataria makade isata leke yenika ko supra dadishtaka. And this year, don't be ashamed to pray anywhere. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kali makadosa. If they are not afraid to smoke, we are not afraid to speak in tongues. Ah, madibra kali kadeisha. This year, you must carry your faith with boldness, with audacity. Leke ne mekedu shata mambra dakadosa. When they come to you, how will you do it? Tell them God will help me. God will help me. Don't be ashamed. Mande di bakalu shata. Reke ne mekedu shakaya libraham dagadosa. In the name of Jesus, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. Ma kadosha. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're going to scream now. With a loud voice. The Bible says Jesus shouted. Lazarus come forth. We're going to do it with steps. So first of all, those that are trusting God for baby, 
We need to shout baby comfort. It's not by laying hand on. There's a place for that. But there's a battle you win in the place of the word. That's what gives you the ginger to do more. If they pray for you to get baby, and I'm not saying there's something wrong with it, right? Please get me right. Because I know it's that block now. They will carry it. She said, but yeah, that's not what I said. But there's something about working with God to get a victory on something. When you get it, it gives you confidence to do it again. If you go for prayer, they pray for you. You get the baby. If you want to get job, you go again for prayer. What is it? Do you want to kill your pastor? Do you want to kill your pastor? He will teach, teach. After teaching you and declare, you say, say, Pastor, touch me here. Touch me here. This year you're going to speak. God is looking for disciples, people that are strong in him, that understand and know their God. So we're going to first shout. We're going to shout for baby first. So you shout baby comfort. Then after baby comfort, we're going to shout our church building, comfort with ease. Listen. That's the second thing we're shouting. Comfort with ease. The third thing we're going to shout is money in every currency. Come to me. Do we understand? First thing is baby. Let's add marriage. Because some people are eyeing me. Let's add marriage. Baby and marriage come forth. Church building come forth. With ease. Ah, with ease. Then the third one, money in every currency come to me. Not comfort to come to me because it can comfort and go to the pastors in front. Bless you, sir. Can go to the pastors in front. So you can say, come to me. So we're going to shout. One, two, go. Marriage and babies come forth. Ah, wait. Is that the shout people are shouting? They say Jesus shouted with a loud voice and authority. If you are shouting money and babies comfort. Uh-uh. Satan is, is, is hard of hearing. It's not God we're talking to now. It's not God we're talking to. It's the idiot that is blocking the way for us to collect what belongs to us. So are we ready now? Are you ready? Are you sure? Where are the people that want to get married this year? Where are the people that want to have babies this year? Oh yeah, let's do this. One, two, go. Marriage and babies come forth. Hallelujah. Now we're going to call forth our church building. Pastor Shona, with ease. With ease. In half the time. Look at the word God gave me as I was coming. I said I don't have time. That's why. Let me just quickly read it to you. Ah, no, there's no way I will leave without giving you this word. If not, I will cry. Haggai 2.9, the N-I-R-V. The version is important. It says, this new temple will be more beautiful than the first. <laughs> says the Lord. And in this place, I will give peace to my people. Are you ready? Praise God. The name of the building is Mercy Seat. Hey! With ease. So we're going to shout, Mercy Seat, come forth with ease. Are you ready? Hey, Jody, are you ready? Because God is ready, are you ready? One, two, go. Mercy Seat, come forth with ease. Celebrate Jesus. Hayali makadaboko shata. Then finally, because when we settle into that place, we will still need money to do one or two things. You understand? Just a few things. Because let me tell you the thing about new thing. That's where you know that the old camera does not fit the new place. Mm. So we now saw that old one, and we need to buy a new one. Do you see what I'm saying? So now we still need money. And we need it in every currency because some things we will buy from China. Some things we will buy from London. Some things we will buy from America. Some will come from Egypt. So we need money in every currency. So are you ready, guys? Are you ready? One, two, go. Money in every currency. Come to me now. Celebrate God if you believe it. Celebrate God if you believe it. Hey, Jody, celebrate God if you believe it. 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 Celebrate him. Celebrate God if you believe it. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to hand over the mic to your pastors now, but I want to show, I want to say something to you. Please go back to the word. Get off social media and go back to the word. My heart bleeds that Christians cannot answer questions today. We grew up knowing that you must rightly divide the word of truth. And the only way you can do that is if you study. These days we don't study. Two seconds or you version will come out with that revelation. Go back to the word. What did I say? If I didn't say anything to you today, please take that away. Go back to the word. Stay in the word. The secret is there. Whatever you are looking for is there. Everything you are looking for is there. This morning as I was coming, God showed me something else and I was so excited about it. I thought I was going to share it here, but I don't have time. But let me say this. You know when they went back to look for Jesus at the grave? The Bible said something. That there was an earthquake. And an angel rolled away the stone and sat on it. I am Makatoza. Listen. God is going to make sure that whatever he brought you out from after this conference, you will not be able to go back. The angel rolled away the stone and sat on Do you know what that means? It means that, eh, I, I don't draw... I don't know how many of you used to fight when you were small. People are jebota. You would draw line. Say if they born you were, eh, pass here. That's what the angel did. The angel drew the stone and sat on it and said, Satan, I dare you to take these people back to where I brought them from. If you know that you know that you know that your God has drawn line for Satan, celebrate. Let him hear your loudest praise. 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 H.O.D., you are not shouting. Should they roll back the stone? 